been a while since I've been able to make a video. Unfortunately, we uh, just had a, a lockdown due to COVID. I was supposed to lead a trip up to the Helena Aurora Ranges over that weekend, and I was hoping to do a video then, but we had to cancel because of the lockdown. I've now taken a chance to come out here just for an overnight run out to Eaglestone Rock and uh, just do some photography and some video along the way, checking out a couple of new places that I wanted to see, uh, including Sharkmouth Rock. You'll see that into the video and some of the images I took there. Um, we came to Eaglestone Rock where we camped for the night. We were hoping to, to get a photo of the supermoon as it rose, but unfortunately the, the sky was clouded in, so that didn't occur. But it was still a good night, absolutely wonderful. Uh, then I got up this morning and the sunrise over Lake Brown was absolutely stunning. Normally the, the lake it doesn't have water in it, but this time there's been water because of a cyclone that came through. So all the reflections on the lake was just absolutely beautiful. I hope you enjoy this video. Please, if you do, like and subscribe. Uh, if you're considering ever wanting to come out this way, I'm now running photography tag along tours. They're going to be suitable for both four-wheel drive and um, two-wheel drives. So just check out my website. All the information will be down below. And uh, contact me if you're interested. Anyway, sit back and enjoy this video. And uh, I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making it. I'll catch you shortly when I'm back on the road. G'day, guys. Um, been a while since I've had a movie out, or video out, I should say. Just life and lockdowns and COVID and all that getting in the way. But we're heading out today for an overnighter. We're going to go up to Eaglestone Rock for the supermoon that's going to come up. And along the way, we're going to visit a, a few places that should be of interest. Um, sit back and enjoy it. And if you like it, hit that like and subscribe buttons. It all helps out. And. Uh, encourages me to continue making these uh, videos for you. Anyway, I'll have a chat to you once we get to our next stop, which is going to be the old police station at Yongerton, and uh, probably have a quick lunch break there, do some filming, and then we're heading towards Yorkerine Rock, and then come back down to Sharkmouth Rock. So I'll catch you all once we get to Yongerton. See ya! Suppose we're just about to come into Yongerton, uh, Yongerton is significant because the old building here was the first country police station in Western Australia and the road we've been travelling on to get to it and where we're travelling on to get out from it is the old Goldfield Road and this is the road they used to take to get to and from the Goldfields in Kalgoorlie. So we're going to be pulling over very, very shortly and uh, I'll put, get some photos and some video and show you around so if you're out this way you can pop in and have a look. It's quite an interesting, uh, quite an interesting old building. Okay, we're just coming into Yongerton. You can just see the old building there on your left-hand side. We're going to pull into the driveway, or in the car park, I should say, and uh, get out and enjoy it. I'll have a chat to you guys soon. This is the old. Uh, police station at Yongerton. Uh, it was first built in the late 1800s. Beautiful old building. Beautiful, beautiful old building. A lot of work gone into restoring it. Still a bit to go. We'll go around the back and have a look. There's uh, some rocks here, I'm not sure what they uh, delineate, they may be a grave, may not be. Looks a little bit small to be a, a person, but could be an animal, or pets. But yeah, no, fantastic old building. After it was a police station, it then became an uh, inn and then eventually a um, farmhouse.
You can come out, have a look, explore inside if you want. Not there's much in there. But please, if you do, don't damage it or destroy it. I'd go inside and do some filming inside, but unfortunately this uh, camera is not very good at low light. Okay guys, it was just a quick view of uh, Yongerton and the old police station. Uh, we're now going to head off to a, another rock that's out in the wheat belt called Sharkmouth Rock. Uh, we're going to go and see if we can find it and get some photos there. So I'll um, chat to you once we find that. Catch you shortly. Okay guys, we've just come to uh, a place called Sharkmouth Rock. Just about to walk up in it. It is on private property, so please respect it if you come here to have a look. It's also significant to the Noongar people of the wheat belt. And uh, come along and enjoy it for what it is. Okay, that's Sharkmouth Rock. And you can see why it gets its name. Uh, apparently this is significant to the uh, Noongar people because back in the day, women from outside the Noongar tribe would come here and this is where they'd learn the ways of the Noongar before they were married to the young men. Uh, if you look on the inside of the mouth, there are handprints. But it'd have to be one of the most stunning rocks I've ever seen. Simply stunning. Okay guys, so this is a, a bit better of a view of it. It's just simply stunning, the way that the rock is broken off so it looks like a mouse. Looking down inside the jaws of it. I think it actually looks more like a, a big lizard than a shark. I don't know if you can see it, but it looks like the, not even there's even like a nostril in the end of it there. That was um, Shark Mouth Rock, a, a very, very interesting place. I could actually spend a bit more time there, but unfortunately we're in a bit of a time limit to get to Eaglestone Rock so we can get set up tonight for the super moon that's coming in. So, um, I'll talk to you once we get closer to Eaglestone Rock. It's about an hour's drive from here, I think, so we'll chat to you soon. Catch ya. Okay guys, we're at, at the camp now, uh, just finished setting up, just got my camper trailer all set up, doesn't take too long once you get used to setting it up, I'm going to sit back now, have a cuppa, I'm going to put the drones up, see what we can see, and uh, wait for nightfall, see what the moon comes out, as you probably can see there's a lot of cloud in the sky at the moment. Which is a bit unfortunate. It's a mixed setup over there. We'll have a bit of a fire tonight. And coming around to Steve who's setting up a awning and a 
swag. All right, catch you later. I'm going to fly the drone. everyone. Well we've woken up to an absolutely stunning sunrise this morning. I'll take you down and show you what Lake Brown looks like. It's got water in it and the sun rising up this morning absolutely reflected beautifully over the lake. I didn't do any shooting then because uh, this little camera just wouldn't handle that sort of conditions but I'll put those images up shortly. Uh, also um, we were hoping to do the super moon last night but unfortunately the whole horizon was clouded in and we didn't get to see the moon until once it was right up in the sky. And by then it was pretty late and we were tired after 
pretty reasonable sort of day. So we just went to bed. Anyway, I'm going to uh, take you down. I'll give you a quick look of what the lake looks like with water and I'll speak to you shortly. Okay guys, we're just down on the edge of the lake. If you come around to our left here, you may just see Eagle Stone Rock in the back behind the trees and all that sort of stuff. So that's Eagle Stone Rock. And Eagle Stone Rock comes down to uh, Lake Brown. And Lake Brown is just one of the many, many salt lakes that we have here in Western Australia. They're naturally formed salt lakes. And some of them are small and some of them are very big. Lake Brown is, is very big. Normally though, Lake Brown is, is um, dry and you get the big salt, the big white salt crust and all that across it. However, we've recently had some rain from a cyclone that came through and there's a small coating of water. It's probably no more than five centimetres deep or the whole way across the lake. And it's just dead still this morning. The reflections in it at the sunrise were just absolutely stunning. I'll take you, spin you around a bit and show you the lake. Just excuse the sun because it's going to blow out a bit. But we'll come around. And there you can see the, the sun. Excuse my dodgy filming. I'm just doing this handheld. I can't really see because the sun's in my eyes, but it's it's just simply simply stunning the uh, the reflections on the lake because there's no breeze all the way around to here. There we go. We can see a bit more of uh, Eagle Stone Rock. I'll walk a bit further around, try and show you what it looks like a bit further front on. I won't go too far because I'm going to be going out into the water and I don't want to get wet, especially with the salt. Yeah, it's a fantastic rock. Great place to come and do photography if you're in the landscape photography. And all the patterns in the rock, well, they're all formed by uh, the salt when the wind blows the salt off onto the lake and into the granite rock. And uh, yeah, it makes these absolutely stunning patterns. Okay, guys. As I mentioned before, this is an absolutely stunning place for landscape photography. It's also fantastic for nightscape photography. Um, if you're interested, I've just started a, a business doing photography tag-along tours into the, into the Wheat Belt, the Yilgarn region, up into the Elgoo region, Kennedy Ranges, uh, Carrara Rangelands, all those sort of places. Uh, there's two-wheel drive suitable tours and there's four-wheel drive suitable tours. Uh, if you check out my website, see the information on the screen, but my website is www.westralianimages.com. You'll see a whole lot of tours that I make. Um, there's no minimum numbers. If there's one person interested, I'll take one person out. I do cap it at 10 vehicles, but there's information on the website so you can check it out there. So if you're into landscape photography, nightscape photography, drones, videography, anything, and you're interested in coming, contact me and uh, I'll sit down and we'll sit, uh, work out a time. I don't run have any set dates for the tours. I'll run them as, as required. So if you, you and a group of friends want to go away for a weekend or midweek, contact me and uh, I'll put something together for you. All right, catch us later. It's, uh, it's uh, about 8.40 in the morning and Mick and I are now heading off. Steve's staying a couple of extra days around this area. Good luck to him. Uh, Mick and I are going to head back. We're going to get into Nungaran and then we're going to take the road to Darren. And hopefully we'll stop at the Pink Lake just outside of Darren and put our drones up for a, for a flight. And uh, see if the lake is pink this time or if there's too much water in it. Some years it's nice and pink, and other years it's a muddy pink, but we'll see what it's like this time. Other than that, I'll probably talk to you along the way occasionally. 
and uh, keep you informed of what we're doing and any other places that we stop at. Just in front of me, you can see the beautiful big rock up there. They do a lot of um, rock climbing on that, that rock. I personally wouldn't, but other people enjoy it. Beautiful spot to camp out here at Eaglestone, but there's no bins, no toilets, so take all your rubbish with you and uh, look after and maintain the place and we'll keep using it for years. And uh, this time around, there was hardly any rubbish anywhere, which is good to see. So anyway, I'll um, speak to you a bit later on once we're out on the road. Have a good one. All the um, farmers are getting ready to start seeding shortly. We just passed a farmer back there with his tractor going around the paddock. I've already had some pre-season rain, so I'll be crossing just the fingers. Thank you. Yeah, so as I said, I'll be just getting ready to turn on, uh, get ready to seed and all that sort of stuff. Beautiful, beautiful salmon gums on the left and right hand side of the road. Absolutely stunning. The whole wheat belt and the Great Western Woodlands is, is full of these trees and they're absolutely wonderful. Especially once when they lose all their bark and the new bark comes out and it, they get that nice salmony pink colour and then it goes a really dark salmon. It's absolutely stunning. Now we've got the red morel trees that look very similar to the salmon gum, but they're a bit darker in colour. Okay guys, we're at the um, Pink Lake just outside of Darren. Uh, it looks, looks a little bit pinkish. I don't know if you can see it too well in the, um, the Osmo, but we're pulling in, going to put the, the drones up and have a, have a good look. Okay, Mick, I'm turning left. Nambling Road, it's called. Roger, I'm better Yeah, so, um, yeah, we're at, at the Pink Lake. Now, this Pink Lake is on a private property, so please respect that and don't go inside fence lines that you're not supposed to. There is an area where you can park and, and have a look and all that sort of stuff, but please don't go into areas where you're not allowed to. Okay, I'm going to pull up, I'm going to have a brew and put the drones up. Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, you just went past. No, I was just doing the scenic route. Okay. okay guys, I'll talk to you shortly.
Okay guys, just left the um, Pink Lake just outside of Darren there. Uh, you will see from the drone footage I put up previously, it, it's not over pink, but it is, there's a little tinge of pink there. Sometimes it's really pink, other times it's not so much. Obviously, I think it has to do a bit with the, how much water's in it and all that sort of stuff. But it's still interesting. Uh, hopefully you've liked this video so far. Pretty much at the end of what I was going to film, we're on our way home. I really just wanted to get out and have a night out after being stuck at home for a, a long weekend and all that. And uh, wanted to get out and see Shark Mouth Rock and a couple of the other little places we visited. So hopefully all those images have turned out well onto this video as well. If you like this sort of thing, please like and subscribe and uh, share it with your mates, let them know. And as I said earlier on in the video, I'm now running tours out into the wheat belt. I'm fully accredited with the Tourism Council and insured. So um, check out my website, detailed below. And uh, yeah, I'd like to be able to take some of you out and about. There's plenty to see out here, especially in the wheat belt and all that. Beautiful country. And uh, this time of the year and into and spring and even winter, it's good to get out there. So anyway, Thanks very much for liking. If you've got any comments, please comment below. I'm happy to answer any of them. And as I said, please like and subscribe, share, all that sort of youtube -y stuff. And uh, I'll catch you in the near future when I go to make my next movie, video. Where it's at, that's gotta be yet, I don't know. But I'm busting to get out into the Helena Auroras. So it might be out that way. All right, catch you later. Thanks very much. See you all then.